Hey guys, welcome back to Texas Young Guns, and in today's video, we are going to be reviewing another inverter generator. This time it is the G2319N made by Pulsar. Before we get started, just to remind you to like and subscribe to our channel. We put out videos almost every week. If you like what you see, it's free, and why not? We'd love to have you. Now the G2319N is a 2300 watt peak, 1800 watt sustained power generator. What that means is if you get a high load, this generator will be able to maintain 2300 watts for a very short amount of time. Um, a sustained means that if you have a constant load, something that's going to be several minutes, hours, this will be able to sustain 1800 watts of power. This particular generator has a 60cc overhead valve engine in it. Um, it can currently be found at Walmart for $399. That's of, as of today, May of 2022. And the power output of this generator is right on line with its competitors. Um, the Predator from Harbor Freight, the Hondas, etc. Um, and it has a pretty decent price. I think they actually might have a newer model of this. Um, but if you're looking for a cheap option for an inverter generator, this is a good buy. Now on the front of this generator, you have several buttons and options. Um, this button on the right here is how you start the generator. So you have the off position, the run position, and the choke. To start it, you would have it in the choke and then eventually move it to the run after it's warmed up for a few seconds. I'll show you this later. On the right side, you have two 110 plugs. That's your normal household plugs that you would put chargers and anything in your, your house. On this particular generator, just like other competitors, you have an economy button. So what you would do is, is you would have it in the off position to let the generator run at full RPMs or high RPMs. And then once it's warmed up, you would move it over to economy mode. And what this does is, is this brings the idle position down. So it's not using as much fuel. It's a lot quieter. And then as it gets a demand or a demand for electricity, it ramps up. So you save a lot of fuel this way and it's a lot quieter. Now these two buttons here are your overload protection. So what happens is, is if you overload the generator, these are just breakers. So you will push these and reset the generator. It does have a USB. This is 2022, so everything has a USB these days. So you can hook up your phone and anything else that takes a USB. Up here you do have a sequence of lights. Um, you have your low oil light, meaning if the generator is low oil, it tells you you need to refill it. You have a overload light. So when you overload the generator, it will flash red and you will have to reset it, shut it down and restart it. And then you have an output light. This should be green, meaning that the generator is ready to output electricity or is currently outputting electricity. You also have an old school cigarette lighter port. That's for any, any accessory that takes a cigarette lighter. And lastly at the bottom, you have what you call parallel plugs. So if you have two of these generators, you have these two ports along with a ground. And you can put two of these together. And that will give you twice the capacity for the electricity that you're wanting to run. Now on the left side of the generator, there's basically only one thing to see over here, and that is your pull starter. That's right, this does not have electric start. So anytime you want to start it, you will need to pull this by pulling up away from the generator. On the back of the generator, there's not much to see either. Even less to see than the side we just looked at, and all there is is the exhaust. On the left side of the generator, this side of the generator, there's nothing much to see, however, this is your access panel where you're going to be changing out your oil filter and any maintenance items that you have, emptying the oil, etc. You also have a port on top where you can refill oil, and I'll show you that here in a second. Now on the top, you'll find the cap as well as these quick start guide instructions. The cap does have a vacuum seal. What this means is, is in theory, when you're running it, if you want to run the carburetor out of gas to keep the carburetor from um, getting contaminants and that kind of thing to make it get the float stuck and all that, you can turn this to the off position. The generator will lose the ability to suck in fuel and the generator will shut off and the carburetor in theory will be clean. Now in practice, does this work? No. Now like I said, this is your maintenance hatch. So we will start by unscrewing these two to see what's inside.
So on the inside here, this is the engine. It takes 4.5 liters or 1.18 gallons of fuel. It takes 11.8 ounces of oil. And here's all your access to the engine of the generator. So inside the engine, you have your oil fill or where you'll change the oil. Now this is not one of the better designs that I've seen because the oil actually faces upwards. So what happens is, is you actually have to lean the generator over and they do have a little oil catch right here, but you'll probably want to create a funnel. It's not a terrible design, definitely not the best, but this is where you would change the oil. Up top, you have this access panel right here. This is where you would change the spark plug. So you could actually change the spark plug in theory without even taking off the side panel. Um, it seems like it'd be easier to have both open, but that's just me. Um, you do have a gas drain from the carburetor if you want. What you'll do is you unscrew this screw right here. You can actually drain the fuel instead of using the vacuum up here. Um, you can actually drain the fuel from the bulb, which is kind of a neat feature. And then of course, this is where your air filter would be. You would take this screw out, this whole thing would come out, and your air filter would be inside. You'd want to change that every once in a while. I didn't mention it earlier, but this does take 10W30 oil. So you can get it down at your local auto parts store or online, wherever you choose to get your oil. Now, who is this generator for? Well, this is for the person who's camping or the person who wants to run small appliances around their property. Um, this will not run um, a big AC unit by itself. Um, this isn't going to run very powerful appliances. Um, it is a inverter generator. Um, so what that means is it outputs clean sine wave energy. So this will safely power your laptop, phone, any kind of sensitive electronics. Um, now you could parallel these two. We've done it on our RV. Um, so if you parallel two of these, you can run um, like an AC unit. It, and who else is this for? Well, this is a what I like to call a suitcase generator, meaning it's a smaller size, so you can pick this up by yourself. Now, this is not a light girl. She's kind of hefty. She weighs 47 pounds. So while you'll be able to pick her up, it's not going to be comfortable. You'll have to do the straddle with it along your side. Um, but it is doable with one person, which is the reason why you would get one of this size rather than a bigger one. Now, she is extremely efficient on gas. So as you heard earlier, she barely has over a gallon of gas, but that should last you six to eight hours depending on your use, which is crazy efficient. So without further ado, let's get her outside and see what she sounds like and do a sound test. Now, in order to start this generator, you need to change the big button here from off to run to choke. You want it in the choke position when it's cold. And you also want to turn off the economy mode um, you want to have it in the high RPM mode so when it starts it can rev up and it can get warmed up. Now what you're going to see me do is, is when it starts up, you're going to see me change it from the choke position and slowly turn it to the normal run position. Normally this thing takes about two to three cranks. I've never been able to get to start on the first crank, um, but we'll see what happens today. I'm sure it's going to make me look like a fool, but let's see. So choke position, economy off, here's your start full cable now sitting here just running in the high RPM mode we're getting about 80 decibels now watch me change it from high RPM mode to economy mode and listen to the idle come down and be a lot quieter. So now I'm going to plug this shop fan into it and you'll be able to see it and hear it ramp up. All right guys, and that concludes this startup review unboxing of this G2319N made by Pulsar. Um, one good thing to note is everything online says it's a 60cc engine. 
but if you look on the tag on the side it's an 80 cc so what is it truly that's your guess I would recommend this generator it's a good generator I've never had any problems with it um, the only problems I've ever had is when I've let it sit um, for a couple months it was really hard to get started but under regular use you saw it it started up on the first try made me look like a fool like I thought it was going to um, it runs everything that I've needed um, I also I have a competitor Harbor Freight uh, Predator the 2000 watt um, personally I, I do like the Predator better and we'll do a review in the future as to why um, but by all means this is a great generator and you should not hesitate to buy it so hope you enjoyed that video guys remember to like and subscribe and we'll see you next week bye